on this episode of Naughty Nut. We're going to do some brainstorming, come up with a plan to take the project forward, fit the engine and the gearbox in the car and weld the diff. First thing first, let's make a plan so we have a rough idea of all the things that needs to be done. And first on the list is fitting the engine and the gearbox in the car, which we will be covering in this episode. Also in this episode, we'll be welding the diff. That is, we're gonna take the diff out. That's the diff. We're gonna take the diff out and we're gonna weld the diff. So obviously this is a normal diff. So normal diff me kya hota hai? Ke the power comes from the engine, from the shaft, and it divides the power equally to both the wheels. Now while turning in turning radius, one wheel is rotating slower than the other wheel. The inside wheel is rotating slower than the outside wheel. And in drifting, we don't want that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna weld the diff and both the wheels, you know, they're gonna deliver equal amount of power. Third on the list is converting the drum brakes in the rear into disc brakes. That is replace the drum brakes with disc brakes. These are drum brakes, uh, not very efficient for hand braking and uh, as you know for drifting we'll be using a lot of hand brakes. Fourth is the hydraulic hand brake to lock up the rear wheels. A full custom exhaust because this engine wasn't meant for this car. And last but not the least, rear mount radiator setup. Now we'll see why we are not mounting the radiator in the front and doing a rear mount radiator setup. The engine along with the fan proved to be too big to fit in the car's engine bay. So we had to get rid of the fan that is fitted in the front of the engine. And as you can see, there's hardly any space for the radiator to be mounted in the front. After removing the fan, we had to cut the gearbox tunnel to get the gearbox up high and properly inside the car. We had to do a few more cuts to fit the gearbox properly inside the car. And finally, the engine and the gearbox were properly inside the car. I'm sorry, I don't have any footage of us fitting the engine and the gearbox inside the car because all hands were on deck and there was no one to hold the camera and no one free to shoot. We're working on the engine mounts over here and as you can see on the top of the engine, that's the fan that we took off along with the fan hub. We made the engine mounts using the parts lying around in the garage. It's a mix of uh, different engine mounts of different cars. But yeah, it worked well for us. We set the engine in the place and now we're just welding the mounts into the frame after bolting the engine mounts onto the engine. Please excuse my friend's industrial language. Now we were facing some clearance issue when while fitting the engine as you can see um, the oil pan was touching the front cross member or the front subframe and we had to put um, if you can see that's a brake pad just as a distance piece so it stays that much away from hitting the oil pan Moreover, the engine was also almost hitting the front sway bar. That's the front sway bar. And the oil pan was almost touching the front sway bar as well. Now, 
I'll show you later in daylight the engine is sitting a little bit tilted and here you can see that's the steering rod and uh, it's also almost touching the gearbox there's not much distance between the gearbox and the steering rod right there so there were some clearance issues but as it is right now i'm happy with the the fit of the engine the way it's sitting right now that's the brake pad as the distance piece that i was talking about you can see it in this shot clearly now from the inside of the car you can see that the gearbox is sitting quite nicely but it is a little further and a little higher than what we would want it to be it's not an issue from the bottom it looks even better we will have to make a transmission mount plate as you can see we already have the transmission mount but we will have to make the plate that will mount the transmission to the frame the drive shafts they look like orphans without being connected to the transmission we will work on that later now in the daylight you can see clearly the engine is sitting quite high and it's sitting a lot further in the car the engine is further than the front axle uh, we had to fit it this way to make sure we get all the clearances you can see the front engine mount clearly over there and we can see a decent clearance between the oil pan and the front subframe all the clearance quite nice and now the part I was talking about the engine is slightly tilted the front of the engine is higher than the back side of the engine but it's not going to affect the performance of the car so we are okay now removing the diff of the car so we can weld the diff usually we would need LSD to drift the car LSD not the drug LSD LSD means limited slip differential but obviously we can't find the LSD for this particular car so we just gonna weld the diff are we just torching off the excess oil so while welding it doesn't catch fire and from there we will go on to weld the inside gears of the differential While welding the diff, make sure that you only weld the inside gears together. That is the side gear and the spider gear as shown in the picture. Do not weld the ring gear. If you weld the ring gear, the diff will be useless. That's it for this episode. In the next episode, we're going to convert the inefficient drum brakes into efficient disc brakes in the rear. Thank you for watching. Please hit the like and subscribe button. See you next time.